Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about a trade proposal that was just brought up the other day. And I want to talk to you guys about it, get your opinion on it. I'll tell you mine. And yeah, it's very interesting. It's very intriguing. It brought up a lot of controversy. And that is why I'm making the video today. So without wasting any more of your time, let me tell you about that proposal. So on the Tony Marinero podcast, I'm pretty sure he had guest Grant McKegg on. And somebody asked a question. I'm pretty sure the question was brought up. Would you trade Connor Bedard for Cole Caulfield and Montreal's two first round picks? And, you know, this sparked a lot of interest in me because I don't know. I'm very biased. I think I'm a very biased Habs fan. I try not to be. But seeing how many different responses were generated from from people, it kind of made me think a lot about both sides of it. And uh, I come to a final conclusion. And I'm going to tell you about it. So here you have Connor Bedard, a generational player, franchise player at minimum, right? You know, you just saw what he did at the World Juniors. He's been putting up numbers like this his whole life. No one's surprised. He's going number one. And this guy is going to change any team for the better. But I don't know if I'd be ready to give away Cole Caulfield and our two picks for him. I call it biasness. Maybe I'm just too emotionally attached to Cole Caulfield. He's got a special place in my heart as a Habs fan. But it's just a lot to give up. Some people think easy. Bam, just like that. That's a quick done deal. Connor Bedard takes all of them easily. But you got to think about the long run too. And you got to think about the state of the team. Think of it this way. Let's say we don't do the trade. I mean, it's a trade proposal, right? It's not a trade rumor. But hypothetically, we don't do the trade. We keep our consistent He's going to be consistent. 40 goal scorer, Cole Caulfield, perfect. And we have our two picks. Let's say Florida's pick is lucky enough to be top 10. You could pick like a Braden Yeager, an Andrew Crystal, Dalibor Dvorsky, very high end players all the way at that 10, 12 area. And with the Montreal Canadiens pick, that's going to be probably top six. If we're lucky, you could get that down to top four, maybe three. And you're looking at a player like Fantilli. Mitchkov, Carlson, I don't know. Let's say you get a you draft and you get Mitchkov. You also get Dalibor Dvorsky, and you still keep Cole Caulfield. That is an all around very solid team that you have now. As then, if you were to get rid of Cole Caulfield and those picks, and you acquire Connor Bedard, now you're starting to look a little bit more like the Edmonton Oilers, and that you know isn't really working out for them. They have the two best players in the league. And they aren't anywhere near a cup. They're barely making the playoffs this year. Connor Bedard will no doubt bring more to a team than Cole Caulfield will. No doubt will he bring more than Adam Fantilli, Carlson, or Mitchkov will individually. And same for, let's say, Florida's pick. He's going to top all of those guys. But all three of them, I don't know. I think I'd rather keep the two picks and Caulfield. Especially when you think about it price-wise. Because... Connor Bedard is going to be one expensive motherfucker. When he hits his prime, he's going to be getting McDavid numbers, McKinnon numbers, Matthews numbers. That's going to be very costly. And you got to keep in mind, we still haven't given Cole Caulfield his extension yet. Obviously, we wouldn't have to if you trade him away. But you're still going to have to pay Slavkovsky in the upcoming years. Kirby Dock in what, he has a couple year contract. So after that, you have to pay more. Caden Gooley is probably going to get a fat one. You know, Jordan Harris, Jack, they're going to get solid ones, but it's just going to, it's going to be very costly. Meanwhile, if you keep Caulfield and the picks, Caulfield is going to be the same as Suzuki, hopefully. Keep some money in the tank that'll easily cover like Dvorsky, let's say. And then, you know, you still have some in the tank because Connor Bedard, like I said, would be one expensive motherfucker. So you'd still be able to pay everyone off and you just have a very complete top six. Now, just before I end off this video, I'm just going to give you some imaginary lines. And it would be like, let's say, Slavkovsky, Suzuki, and Bedard. Just hypothetically. That would be, let's say, line one. And the second line, I don't know. You have Doc. You have, let's say, Anderson. They still keep him. Or I don't know. It just feels like you lose a lot of depth. Obviously, we have guys coming up. A lot of good prospects. But imagine your top six is Slavkovsky, Suzuki, Caulfield, Doc, Dvorsky or Crystal and even an additional Leo Carlson or Mitchkov or if you're lucky Fantilli that is a stacked top six and I don't know 
that's just my opinion. I really do think I would keep Caulfield on the two picks. Call it biasness. It probably is. But that is just my opinion, and I'd love to hear your opinion. I'd love to hear if you would do the trade, if you wouldn't. Like I said, this is all just one question that sparked a lot of controversy. There's absolutely no way this comes true. Even Cole Caulfield himself liked the tweet. So yeah, this won't happen. This won't ever happen. But it's really fun to think about sometimes because everyone kind of has different opinions. So yeah, with that being said, that is going to be all for today's video. Let me know down in the comments what you think. If you did enjoy, don't be afraid to like, comment, and subscribe. And with that being said, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.